Michelle Graves, your host on today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm glad to have you here. Now, at The Power of Money, we are interested in three things happening. First, we want you to get the necessary education so that you and your family can make the decision that will impact positively on you in your financial life. The second thing is that you be empowered to prosper. I only want the best for you. And you can only get that if you have education and then the drive to make it happen. And the third thing that is so important to me is that you recognize that life is more than a journey and that you be energized so that you can begin to participate in the truly joyous experience of living. So, here's to empowerment, here's to education, and here's to energy. I'm Michelle Graves, your host, Power of Money. And here we go. And here we go. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, and as always, I'm delighted to have you in my world for the next hour. And these next couple of segments of The Power of Money are going to be quite extraordinary because we're going to be looking at an incredible, horrific tragedy in the city where I produce this show, Dayton, Ohio. On May the 27th, Memorial Day, disaster struck this population base of over a half a million people in the form of multiple tornadoes reaching, according to the National Weather Service, a category E4, which is 160 mile per hour winds. Incredible devastation and destruction. They're not recovered yet. It's gonna be a long, long time for Dayton, Ohio, a community that truthfully I love dearly. I'm from Cincinnati and we have and are experiencing torrential rains, but we did not have anything to compare with what happened to these people and the devastation that is now a part of their lives, the number of homes that were destroyed. In hab you can't move back in, done, finished, cars, everything just blown up. So, true to my commitment to keeping you informed, particularly those of you that watch me in other cities throughout the United States, uh, Dayton needs to be on your radar. They need help, they need support, and they need your prayers um, because this is gonna be a long journey home. So what I decided to do is to bring on as my first guest for the next hour, LaRonda Jackson who owns her own agency, Property and Casualty. She also does other things as a longtime resident of this community, a fascinating woman. And she's going to share her experiences in the property and casualty side because, listeners, let me just give you a little piece of advice. Can, can I, as the money lady, say this? If you have property, you should have insurance. Why? Because stuff can happen. Um, if you have a mortgage, you're going to be required to have it anyway with the bank. But if you own a home that you inherited uh, through a legacy or it's paid off, you still need to have insurance. Okay? You, you do. Because if you don't have insurance and devastation comes, what will you do? So I'm going to uh, open up the show and let LaRonda Jackson introduce herself, give you a little bit of background about who she is, what makes her so special, because she is special, and um, give her perspectives, her insights, and stories about this Dayton tragedy, and having said that, perhaps some solutions. How are you? Hello, good morning. Thank you Thank for you. coming on yes, set. Yes, absolutely. I am just, this is hard. Yes, it takes your breath away. It absolutely has taken my breath away. Mm -hmm. I keep hoping that the outcomes will be different. Okay. 
but I want you to share what, if you could, share for the uh, viewing audience what happened. Okay. So Monday, May 27th, Memorial Day, um, we knew storms were coming because they had forecasted, you know, some thunderstorms and things like that. But no one really knew that we had a tornado coming. So at approximately, I would say between 11 p.m. and 10 after 11. When people are asleep. Yes, and a lot of people were asleep. I was amazed to find out how many people were in bed. Yeah. Asleep. Because they're tired. And then they heard these sirens um, going off. Um, we experienced a tornado. We experienced multiple tornadoes and the devastation, and I use that term because mm -hmm. I don't know what else to call it, um, is very serious and it's heart wrenching. But at the same time, you see some hope at the end of the mm -hmm. tunnel, some light. There were seniors that couldn't get out of their homes. I had one particular client that knew that they lived across the street from a senior. They went and got her out of her bed and got her into her bathtub because none of them had basements. Oh my goodness. And so, because we had, I mean, you knew minutes because of the way that the meteorologists mm -hmm. work now, you knew it was on its way. Okay. They had it plotted out almost to the street. My goodness. And they the technology is there saved now. This lady's, they saved her life. Oh, the yes. house, was the house destroyed? Her house, her room, the area where she was sleeping was hit by a tree. Oh. And so there, there was just devastation. But I kind of wanted to go back a little bit. I, you know, I had been going on Facebook Live um, every Monday, and I had been just talking about insurance topics. Okay. Because I know that there's a lot of things that we just don't know. Okay. And the only reason I know them is because it's my industry. Right. So I was talking about things like gifting your grandchild this car, and it's still in your name, and they're in another state, and you're insuring it in your state, and why that's a no-no. Yes. So I was just kind of randomly talking about life insurance because people's term policies had come due and they felt like the mm -hmm. carpet had been snatched and they didn't know what they were going to do. Right, exactly. Now I don't have any insurance and I'm 70 years old Right. and I still have a mortgage. I thought I wouldn't, but I do. Mm -hmm. So I had been talking about that. So after Monday, May 27th, I've done nothing but go live on Facebook almost daily. Good about for the tornado. You. So I've tried to Now how can a person find you? On okay. my Facebook page, um, it's LaRonda Jackson and I have a business Facebook page for LFL Insurance. Okay. So I try to get followers. It's been shared. I mean the viewings are shared like good, ten and good, fifteen good, times. Good, 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 good. People are asking me questions as I'm speaking. Yes. And so that allows me to be it allows me to remind people that I live in this community as well. Exactly. And here's Your why business. you yeah. should have an agent. Yes. Because I'm here, I see it, I I didn't have to come in town. I live here. Right. So I live approximately two miles from where the tornado hit in Troutwood and I'm two miles, my office is two miles, and I dodged both of the calamities in my office and my home. Yeah. We lost power briefly, we lost water maybe a couple days, but nothing compares to... Losing your home. Yeah. And it's, it's looks you know, like it's, matchsticks. And it's, you know, it's your home, but it's those things that you can't get back. Right, You pictures know, your graduation the, pictures, your yeah. wedding pictures, your grandchildren's first piece of art that they made, those are the things that make you sob. And I'm yes. not going to lie, I have cried. Yes, I, I cried. Um, it was so cried. painful to watch yeah. memories. Yes. And photos are memories. Yes. That are gone. Yes. Unless, folks, unless you have cloud technology. Right. And you can put it up in space. Right. But so still. what I've tried to do, I have a little list here on my phone, so if I keep looking down, oh, that's quite all right. I just want to make sure I cover certain things, not only for the people in this county, but around the country. Okay. So I'd like to talk about the term tornado. Okay. There's no such thing as, do I have tornado insurance? <laughs> because <laughs> okay. that's the call. There is okay. no such thing as tornado insurance. Okay. It's wind. It falls under wind damage. Okay. And it's, you're covered. For wind, unless I don't know of a policy that doesn't cover wind. Whether okay. you own your home, whether you rent your home, whether you own the building that your business is in, or mm -hmm. you lease a space and you've got a bagel shop. Okay. Wind is wind. Okay. Okay, so you're going to be covered, but it's what type of coverage did you buy?
Mm. So here's how it works. Okay. Someone will call Can and I they'll... interrupt? Yes. Would you please tell our viewers, because your story, you are an entrepreneur and a business owner, and your agency has been doing this for how many years? I opened my agency July 1st, 2001. So it'll be my 18 gosh, years next month. 18 years. So yes. you are, folks, she's a seasoned professional. <laughs> Okay, that makes a difference. It, it does. really does. Yeah. So anyway, continue. Okay. I just needed you to say that. So, you know, you get the letter from the Montgomery County Auditor or where whatever your county is, you get this auditor's letter. Okay. And this letter tells you based on market value what your tax is going to be on your property. Okay. So I know when those letters come out, everybody starts calling. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, my house on here is only worth 90000 mm -hmm. Why do you have me insured for 250000 <laughs> I want my insurance brought down. Really? Because they're trying to save money. Of course. And I understand that. So we explain, at least I do, you have to have insurance to replace your home. Right. At the cost of lumber today and drywall today, and windows today, and siding today, and brick, and concrete, and all of that. So that's why we ask you how many square feet, what's on your floors, if you had hardwood and you suffer a loss, you're supposed to get more hardwood. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, but the insurance should be there. So there are a lot of people who are not, have they don't have enough coverage to replace their home. Oh, that is It's been a horrible. total loss, and they either fussed or found an agent or found a company to insure them for what they wanted to be insured uh -huh. for, and now they don't have enough to rebuild. Whew. That's a tough conversation. That is a very tough conversation when your house is gone. Yes, because nobody really believes that there's going to be a total loss. And it's funny, or maybe not funny, but it's just... I always use tornado as an example. Okay. If a tornado hit your home and we had to rebuild it, we can't rebuild your house for 90,000. Not today. You've got 2,500 square feet. Right. Um, you've got an attached garage. Right. And so now people get it. And unfortunately, sometimes we're reactive when it comes to insurance. Okay. All we think about is how can I save money? How can you get this rate mm -hmm. down? Mm -hmm. We don't really think about what it'll do for you if you need it and it's common I mean there's everybody's like that there's a lot of people mm -hmm. who are like that if you've never been through something like this you won't understand so there are some homes that are three and four hundred thousand dollar homes and to replace them it mm. might be six or seven hundred thousand and they don't have enough coverage if you had a mortgage on your home that mortgage has to be paid off absolutely because technically it's not your house it's the bank's house so then you get to work with what you have left over. Uh, and so then it might cost ten or 15000 to clear a lot. Right. You can't call your friends and say, hey, come over here and let's clear this lot. Mm -hmm. It is done by a group of professionals. Uh, and so that ten or fifteen or $20,000, that also comes out of that coverage amount. So now you have even less to work with. So really, just so that I'm clear, if you have... A uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, which mm -hmm. is pretty common today, mm -hmm. not exceptional. Some markets more, some markets less. Okay. But, and you have a mortgage on it of two hundred. You, you just you just bought it, right? And so the tornado completely destroys the home. It's mm -hmm. uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. You got to pay out the bank two hundred. Correct. You got to pay to have the lot cleared fifteen. Mm -hmm. I only leaves you like. 35000 A down payment on a new one. A down payment on a new one. And what if your credit is not great? Um, that is so real today. What if your credit is not great? Right, and you don't qualify mm -hmm. for financing. Correct. Oh, my words. Yes. It's that a tough is spot not to be in. even fun. So what you're looking at is coverage first for the amount that the bank um, has loaned you. Mm -hmm. And you're looking for then, I would say, to replace it, Correct. ground up. So Correct. you're actually looking at two times Correct. what you thought. Two to three times. Two to three times. Mm -hmm. And you don't save that much. As a matter of fact, insurance companies don't like to do like market value, right. actual cash value, and they will penalize you. They will surcharge you and charge you extra if you don't insure for a replacement cost. And they should. And they do that. And I'm sure they do. Yes. 
So that's what I've been really trying to Ooh, let wee. people know. Now is the time, well, maybe not today because everybody's so busy, you got to review those coverages. Do I have enough to rebuild? Did I add a room on and I forgot mm -hmm, to tell you about mm -hmm. it? Um, did I make some type of an improvement? Maybe my kitchen, when I first bought my house, maybe it was builder grade. I have Formica countertops. Okay. And now I've invested in granite. Right. I, if you have a storm loss, you should get granite if you had granite, but you didn't increase your coverage. That is so tragic. Yes, it is very tragic. So may I ask you, in this situation with your clients, I'm not even concerned because I know your clients are fine, mm -hmm. but what did you do to kind of make you stand out as an agent during this tragedy? Did you go to their home? I mean, because I know you're swamped. I'm yes. just honored to even have you here today because I know you're swamped. Yes. But what was your response when the stuff hit the fan? Okay. Well, I didn't even know exactly where it had hit. We watched the news until, we kinda, until I fell asleep. And then I heard him say Clayton, Inglewood. So I got up, I looked out, everything looked good. There was like okay. a little piece of wood in my lawn. But um, I have a phone system where if I get calls to the office, it'll notify me through my cell phone. Mm -hmm. And I had like seven messages at 2 a.m. Woo-wee. And so I listened to the messages and it was just panic. I'm sure. So I went on Facebook and I said, due to the storm, instead of opening at nine, the office will open at seven or 7.30, Beautiful response, I said. okay. So you can start calling. And so then I thought, they don't have phones. They don't have phones. Because they didn't have phones. Ah. And you couldn't even use your cell phone because towers were down, so you couldn't ah. get signals. I said, I'm just gonna go over there. I'm just gonna drive. Okay. And I could not believe what I saw. When I got to Denlinger Road, there were trees down. It looked like a bomb had dropped. Oh. There my. were um, telephone poles and electric poles down with live wire, and they were, cutting off wires, Vectron was cutting off gas because okay. they didn't want explosions. And um, I wanted to go down one particular street because I knew where my clients lived. Yes. So there was a tree in the way. You couldn't get down this street. There was a tree there. So I just pulled my car over by that tree. I put my purse in the trunk of the car and I walked. I climbed over that tree mm. and I saw clients standing outside, mm. you know, just like rubbing their heads. Yeah, shock. Um, they were huddled together. Shock. Um, I just felt like I, I didn't rescue them, but I knew that they needed to see me. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. needed, even if I, I didn't bring anything with me, I didn't have a checkbook with me, no. I didn't have groceries, I just knew I needed to show up. Yeah. And I, we hugged. Some of us were in tears. Mm. Um, one particular guy, he was not my client, but his sister and I are friends. And this guy was digging through the rubble. And I said, find your medication. Find the things that you've got to find like right now that you need today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had not been able to reach anyone at his insurance office and they said it would be 24 to 48 hours. Right. So right. I told him. that's the standard corporate no respond. well not with me oh i know there's that. no way yeah yeah that's I why i said you're successful. take pictures of everything mm -hmm. and start spending money if you've got it you will be reimbursed okay and i'm telling you that even though i don't represent your company you will be reimbursed mm -hmm. so as yeah, i got i'm to, sure they yes. forget the picture thing though you gotta have because they're in pa panic mode. for more than one reason you know i advise take pictures because you're gonna forget what you had. Isn't that Because in a couple of weeks, you've gotta write down everything, everything you, you lost. Got. Yes. You're not gonna remember that one blue lamp that sits in the hallway when you turn the corner and there was something <laughs> underneath the table. Yeah. So take pictures of what used to be a room okay. because it can jog your memory that you had two end tables in there and a mm -hmm. lamp on each one and cushions and right. things on your, you've gotta replace Everything. Everything, yes. Most people don't think, what do I, we have so much stuff, nobody even really knows what they have. They don't. Yeah, you've they got don't. this set of dishes you use for 4th of July. Right. And then you've got something you use for Thanksgiving. And then you got a set of china that's in the basement. You're talking to me. I mean, there's me. just stuff. We I, have a lot of we, stuff. We do, that's and America. And insurance is there, you pay a premium yes. to use it. Right. And so you need to be reimbursed for everything that you've lost. So what I did, um, there's something called first notice of loss. Okay. So one of the companies that I write for that is amazing is Erie. Okay. They're not in every state. They're in about 14, 15 states. They give agents an 
extreme amount of power in the time of a loss. So huh. I can write a check and get you in a hotel today. Okay. I don't have to wait for red tape and an adjuster right. and 24 hours and 48 hours. I can write you a check for lunch today because you just lost your kitchen and what are you going to eat? Exactly. So they yeah. give agents um, check writing authority and I just start writing checks. Oh. I start making calls, where are you going to go, where are the hotels? Because when contractors come, I mean the contractors were here, like Johnny on the spot. Were they? You know, we call them storm chasers, but they are here. They're but, here from all around the country. But they need to be. They've got all the hotel rooms. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They you have, couldn't get anything close. You can't close. get a hotel. You gotta go far because the contractors have the hotels. <laughs> ah, yes. That's called plan ahead. Yes. So they track that information yeah. as well. Yes, they do. And they're here. They're tarping roofs. They're cutting down trees. If you've got a tree that's on your car, and this car wasn't in the garage. This car was in the driveway. Not only can you not get to work, the second car that's in the, in garage, the garage can't come out because your car is in the way. We got to get that tree out of the way. And we got to get it out of the way now. We have trees that are landed oh. on properties. Get the tree off the house. The longer it sits there, the more damage. So Erie is smart enough to know, get in on these claims faster. And be done. It's better to pay a $15,000 claim than a $50,000 claim because you showed up three weeks later. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. People yeah. have suffered even more damage. Right. If they don't have a tarp, I talked to somebody on Sunday, she doesn't have a, have a tarp yet. She has a hole in her roof. Uh, so water's coming into her house. Absolutely. And I don't want clients climbing up there. Oh, no. Oh, no, exactly. no, no. No, that's another, exactly. that's another whole area. So you want to know, when you talk to an insurance company or you're getting quotes, ask them. Yes. How do you handle claims? What can I expect? What would be reasonable? Because, you know, we see all the cute commercials. Oh, please. I but call when them it's, screen savers. When it's real deal. <laughs> oh, yes, with boots on the ground. What can I what expect? Can you, if my family yeah. is standing outside and we don't even have clothing for tomorrow, uh, how fast can you get to me? And what, what can I expect? Right. And so a reasonable expectation is what? with this company? Those are the questions that we need to ask. Mm. So typically, under when we look at other areas of the country that have experienced um, tornadoes and hurricanes, I, they're ready. Right. They're more, they're ready. We weren't ready. Right. We weren't ready. We didn't know. I mean, I was yeah. just stunned. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. Yeah. Dayton is Dayton, where my Ohio. TV show produces. Yes, I not mean, far from here. Not far from Total here. devastation. Total devastation. Roof's completely off. I had one client, she oh. called. She couldn't get out of her front door because the neighbor's trampoline was pressed, lodged up against her door. Oh, my God. It was that bad. People have stuff in their yard. They don't even have a brown roof. They have red shingles, and they got brown shingles in their yard. And no telling where that's Insulation in a car. I saw a Suburban that looked like God had balled it up like a paper wad. No. Yes. Total devastation. No. Yes. So I am trying to educate people mm. so they have reasonable expectations. What happens? So you've suffered a claim and it's forty or $50,000 loss. Yes. Your home, this corner has to be rebuilt. The trusses, the roof, everything. Everything. Well... That check's not coming to you. That check is going to your mortgage company. And if oh. it does come to you, it's a two-party check to you, you and, and your mortgage company. So now that's even longer for your work to be done. So the mortgage company, which is who? It's a corporation it's or an individual? It's a corporation. So that has to go through It there. might have to go to Tulsa uh, or it might I'm, have to go to Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And a lot of them, I did hear, they're allowing people to go to the local branch if it's like a bank and they have uh -huh. a branch here. Okay. But if you have Wells Fargo, there's no Wells Fargo around here. Not at but all. But if you've got like a U.S. bank or Chase right. or Right Pack Credit, something right. close, right. they did set up um, like a, I guess, a process where mm -hmm. you could take it into the local branch and get it signed off on. To get your work done. To get your work started. And so I have been warning people um, about contractors. There are contractors putting signs in yards just because. They haven't done any work. 
they're just soliciting and they're advertising. So and they're putting a sign yes. in your property yes. and you're not even contracting you with them? Done, they haven't done a piece of work. You know how you do get new windows well, yeah. and they say, we'll give you 10% off if you let us leave our right. sign in your lawn. Right. I mean, there are signs and people don't even have work done. Yes. Oh, come on. I've been trying to just warn people how to choose a contractor. Mm -hmm. Try to choose local. If you can get someone local, get someone local. Um, Check out their ratings can, yeah. at the Better Business Bureau. Yes. Call their customers. Make them show you references, at least three. Yes. And then call them and say, how, how, did you, um, how was that work? Were you satisfied? Did they come as they promised? Because mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than taking off work because you think the roofer's coming and, and they don't show. show. I've had that experience. Yes. Are they, do they keep their word? Uh -huh. What's their workmanship? Because some of them, they should all be insured. Some of them are, some of them aren't. So you asked them for proof of, oh, yeah. of bonding? I wrote a check to a tree cutter and I said, show me your insurance. And he went to his car and he got it. Thank you. You got it. They should travel with that. Business. And not all of it's legit. Mm -hmm. Some of it's some stuff they printed off the computer. Girl, if you don't. Just make a copy. That's insurance fraud. <laughs> it is That's insurance, insurance fraud. fraud. Yes. Woo! Yes. So I said, I need to see your coverage because I need this tree out of this yard. Yes. And prices are higher. So I had clients calling me, well, they're gouging and that's illegal. Well, no, it's not really illegal. It's called capitalism. It, thank you very and much. And so it they would normally cut this tree up. It's in your yard. And if they would normally cut it up for $400, well, today it's 800 Yes. Just because. And the if demand. you don't like it, the tree stays. And the insurance companies know. I mean, they know. Yeah. Even some hotels were higher. A room that's normally ninety nine a night yes. now it's one forty nine a night. Oh my words! Oh, yeah. Housing. I was at a dinner last night. I had an opportunity to meet my Erie adjusters. Yeah, we've got adjusters here. We call it a cat team. So it's a catastrophic mm -hmm, loss, mm -hmm. and they'll send in catastrophic adjusters. So it was a guy from Philadelphia, Chicago, Tennessee, Columbus. Mm. So I had dinner with about ten of the adjusters last mm -hmm. night. And, you know, they were telling me, you know, we are working as hard as we can. Wow. And we have to go out. We have to climb on roofs. We got to look at damage. We have to figure up, okay, this is a 3,000 square foot home. Right. How much is it per square foot for shingles and the labor? And they're just writing checks. They're just getting it done. But they said, try to get people to use local mm -hmm. contractors. And we used to refer contractors. You know, yeah. we used to have a list. Right. So what Put happened me on the with preferred that? list? Well, if that guy does or that person doesn't do a good job. Well, off you're coming the list. back and say you told me to call him. Yeah. Yeah. Off the. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to yeah. do some homework as yeah. a property owner, and people are knocking on your door, telling you you got roof damage and you might not. Mm -hmm. How are you going to know? So How I was would explaining. You know? Would well, it be from your um, agent like yourself? I'm not going up there. I know that's right. I'm not climbing up on a roof. True. I know. Because I'm scared and I might fall. And you might so fall. So what I have, I have, I do have some roofers. Okay. But I can go out and say, hey, go up there and please see if you see any damage. Then if you see damage, let's file the claim. Because if you file the claim and you didn't have any damage, mm. that claim stays on you for five years. As fraud. No, as just a zero paid claim. So if you go shop insurance or it's time to look for lower rates, well, what's this claim? Well, I just had a question. Oh, my god! But gosh. because you called it in, it's a claim. You know so something. So call your agent first. One of the things that I, that just annoys me okay. to no extent is the average consumer does not know these things. They don't. And the chances of your house being blown up are relatively slim but that's it's why you but it's possible because yes. that's why you have insurance because it's possible but how do people other than watching your live streaming every day on Facebook okay. and learning nuggets how do people know the things that they should not do right because I don't I, I don't think that people intend mm -hmm. to uh, do a lot of things I just think they don't know they don't know they don't know. They don't. They're looking at their house and panic and the wife and the kids and the dog and, and mm -hmm. the neighbors and the whole. It's chaos. Yes. Absolute chaos. Yes. And they don't know what to do. No. Nope. And that's why an agent is important. 
I know people buy insurance off 1-800 oh, insure me now pay and for that. dot com insurance yep. and all that. You got to have an agent mm -hmm. because an agent is an advocate. It is my responsibility. I had concert tickets. I was like, I can't go to a concert. I have clients outdoors. Right. Yes. Right. So, Which is responsible. Exactly. I just, I know they need me. They bought my service. You know something that is called, there used to be a term called high touch. Okay. Which is you are a high touch person. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why you've been a successful entrepreneur and business owner, because you care about people. And I know for a fact, and I shared this with my kids, my daughter, in fact, uh, she was going to do a 1-800, and she had been with a carrier, uh, my carrier, for some time. And I told her, don't do mm -hmm. that, because you're not going to be able to call a 1-800 number when something goes wrong and get a human to fix it. It You can, but it takes a while. It will. And what do you do? Let's talk about tenants. Yeah, oh, please do. You know, let's talk about people who rented um, and didn't have renter's insurance Ooh. or they didn't have enough coverage. Um, that's very sad. It is. Because if you live, most of us live where we can afford to live mm -hmm. and several buildings have been condemned Period. as uninhabitable. It's Be it's done. Be out by Sunday. Be out by Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you might not have even lived in a unit that was even touched. It but the entire matter. community they're suffers. Just, yes. And so where are you going to go? You're going to go to your moms or your cousins or your friends and camp out on their couch? No. If you have renter's insurance, you get um, coverage for that. We'll pay for your housing. We'll pay for your lodging. Okay. We'll pay for your food. You know, so I've gone on Facebook Live every day. This is the process. This is how you get food. This is how you get lodging. Right. Um, if it's going to be 60 days or 90 days or five months, um, we're going to get you in some temporary housing, more of like an extended stay. And those are like three grand a month now. Yes, they are. For an extended I stay. And they're not all furnished. I, 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 things have changed. Yes, they have changed. Things have changed. So it is so important to have insurance. Mm. I was on an assignment um, doing an enrollment outside of Chicago, and I was um, at a resident inn. Mm -hmm. I was staying there, and the people, there was a couple living next to me with their dog and their mother-in-law, and their house had been burned down to the ground. Mm -hmm. And the carrier was paying everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the stay, food. Dry cleaning, dry, for your clothes, have to buy new clothes. Yeah, the, the fire stench mm -hmm. ruined all. This is a very uh, affluent couple. Mm -hmm. But I watched and I said, obviously, and I even met their agent. He mm -hmm. came regularly to see okay. how they were doing. Yes. And I didn't ask the carrier, but uh, he said, this is very important. They've gone through loss. And it's mentally, um, you are almost attacked mentally. Ooh. There are people who are struggling. I'm reading it on Facebook where people are like, I need to go talk to somebody mm -hmm. because it's such a huge loss. Jeez. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going. I lived in an apartment that I could afford, and now I'm no longer there, and there's nothing else in the area at, with that price. Right. So what do I do now? That, yeah. What do I do now? So I kind of wanted to talk well, today, let's like, on and look at these what, other things. where do I go after the storm? Okay. Okay. So know how long it takes. It's not going to be immediate because it there's not, not a contractor. Their contractors are so busy trying to do quotes and get commitments that they're not starting on your roof yet. Okay. They know they need to get to it, but, they but they're it. spread thin. Yes. And then, you know, I caution people about a contractor who wants money up front, mm -hmm. like they want half or right. they want some kind of a deposit to go buy the materials. They're probably not your best bet mm -hmm. because if they don't have the money or an account with a shingle company or at Lowe's or mm -hmm. wherever they buy from, they're not going to be a great contractor because okay. they're not getting any money. You can give them a claim number if you want. Okay. But they're going to wait on that check, and if they're reputable and they want insurance work, they'll wait. 
Okay. Yes. So, pay, don't, so pay let me just don't, don't pay a dime. Don't pay a dime. Do no. you all Do hear not that? Pay. Don't pay <laughs> no. a dime. No. So if you say, I'm not giving you a dime, have a nice day, and they walk, what do you do then? There's another contractor. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's 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 an abundance. Yes. Okay. There's another contractor. You might have to wait. Okay. You can wait a month. But if you get your um, home tarped correctly, yes, um, that tarp will last. Really? Now, let me cover this because we had storms this past weekend. Every time we get a storm, we're all nervous. But we had some really high winds. There was a tornado touchdown in Richmond, Indiana, which That's is like 20, 20 miles. miles from yeah. yes. Yeah. And so now tarps are blown out of place. Contractors will come back out and retarp it. Okay. They will do At that. At no charge. At no the... charge to you. Okay. They're hoping to get that work. Mm -hmm. when you get done and some of them will tell you I have you made a commitment to me okay if you've made a commitment to me then I will come out and I will retarp it when you're until you're ready to okay. get your house okay. your roof replaced but that that's that sounds fair yes it's fair yeah it let's does. talk about actual cash value what is because we all think we live in a mansion what and we sort of <laughs> don't. Uh, Sometimes our houses so need some good. improvement. Okay. They need a little Tim the Tool Man. Yeah, Tim the Tool So man. you had some shingles <laughs> up there, and that roof was 30 plus years old. That you had never had you had another never, roof on. Exactly. And the insurance company knows that. Yes. So they may depreciate from your roof. Okay. So let's say you have, it takes 16000 to, to replace new, your roof, okay. which is why you didn't buy one anyway. Exactly, because you didn't have sixteen. You might not get sixteen. You might only get ten. Whoa! Yes, because insurance is about sharing the risk. Right. It's not you take, take on everything that could happen to me. It's not about that. That's oh. why we have deductibles. A deductible is you got some skin in the game. Yes. Because when you got skin in the game, you might be a little more conscious about how mm -hmm. you treat things. Yes. So when I hear, when somebody calls me and says, oh, I got insurance, I left my purse in the car. Or I left my shopping packages in the car from Christmas shopping. And I'm like, won't somebody bust your windows? Well, that's what I got insurance for. You no, know, oh, no, no, you don't. And that's why you have a deductible. So if you want to pay the first 500 or $1,000. Mm -hmm. That's on you. And prove what you had and then worry about all that glass mm -hmm. that's all over the place. Uh, so that's what it is. It's a transfer of risk. The definition of insurance is transfer the risk. I like but that I term. still got some skin in the game. Yes. 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 So, you know, throughout a storm process, what happens with my deductible? Do I have to pay my deductible before I can get some help? Okay. No. If it's going to be a large claim and it's going to be well over your deductible, mm -hmm. we just go on and get you taken care of. And then when you settle on, that person yes. still has to meet that deductible. Yes, though, they do. They okay. do. Okay. All right. Which brings me to my next point. Okay. Refrigerated contents. Every call that came in was, we don't have any power. What do I do with my groceries? Leave my freezer, freezer is full. My refrigerator is full. And it's been over a week and I haven't had power. Are you going to reimburse me for my groceries? I write for seven major carriers and none of them have a food spoilage clause. Really? You gotta meet your deductible first. So tell me how that plays out. So you had $500 worth of food. Yes. You had refrigerated food, you had frozen food, Yes. and you lost it all. So you have $500 worth of food and a $500 deductible. It's on you. It's on you. So how do you, in a situation where like that, is just keeping the refrigerator and freezer closed? And that only works for a few days. A few days. It will not work for weeks. Ah. And so I, had, I brought this up at dinner last night, and you know I said there needs to be a rider because there are some companies that have riders, I've okay. heard, that says, you know what, we'll give you $250 for groceries just because. Yeah. It's a courtesy coverage, it, it's, it's a and need. it will go a long way right. before telling someone you have nothing. Throw all Gosh. your food away and start over. Oh. Yes. But you've got to meet and exceed your deductible. And, you know, it makes people lie. So, you yeah, know, in the industry, agents, we say, yeah, they had $1,000 worth of steaks. Yeah, right. <laughs> and right. $500 in right. lobster, right. you know, because right. then people have to fudge numbers because they are determined to get to something. To get something. I'm going to get something. Well, I think there may be a misunderstanding of what risk is. Correct. I really think that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and because people, 
don't understand. They know. They and don't. if you're they not in insurance, what they want. you don't look at it like No, that. and I know because mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been in the industry for 40 years now, and goodness gracious, you tell people, why do you think, well, they got the money. Excuse me. Right. The bank has the money, but you don't yeah. rob them. And you're going to pay it back over time. Yes, When you, you will. file, you know, with claims, it's about severity. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies are not as harsh on us when it's a severe claim and it's one big claim for $50,000 right. versus, okay, something happened to your fence, you filed a claim for $900. Okay. Then somebody took your ladder and then this happened. And then when you have all those small frivolous claims, mm -hmm. you will get canceled. That Quickly. has happened you will get to canceled. several of my associates. Yes. And when I started probing, because they said some unkind things. So I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Insurance companies are for-profit entities. Yes. They don't like to cancel mm -hmm. if they can make revenue. You've now eliminated their ability to make revenue. So mm -hmm. what happened? Yeah. And turns out frivolous claims. Mm -hmm. Well, the fence, the dog uh, did something exactly. to the fence. Mm -hmm. I said, why didn't you just pay somebody. That's that rainy day. Your mom said you better have some money saved for a rainy day. Yes. We don't. We don't want to take care of the rainy day. We want the insurance company to do it. And not understanding. And we pay a penalty. So for if that. you're, just as a sidebar, if your policy is canceled because of your own pursuit of money, mm -hmm. frivolous claims, is that on a master? Um, oh, definitely. I please tell. It's called speak? clue report. <laughs> please. So tell. it's claims loss underwriting, and so I see that you had four claims last year from somebody else. From something else. Somebody two of them else. Two paid. Okay. Two paid. Two didn't. We look at that. It's just like your credit report. Oh, the last goodness. seven that, years of your I, credit. Yeah. yeah. We look yeah, at the we, last yeah, five yeah. years of your claims. Yes. Whether you're in your car or your home. We look at, oh, I had a dent. Somebody hit my car with a grocery cart. Well, it's not really going to be worth you filing this $400 claim or Just, it was $900 and you had a $500 deductible. Mm -hmm. So all you got was $400 out of the right. insurance company. It's not even worth it. You come out better to stay under the radar. If you can make it claims free. Stay under the radar. <laughs> I'm so serious. I I have not, and I guess that's negligence on my part. I if it's under a grand, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. Yeah. So people say, well, I don't have a grand. Well, what do you want me to tell exactly. you? Exactly. It's this tough. is America, and it's it is tough. hard. It is hard. And if you are trying to make ends meet, that is not an expenditure or a budget item that you even want to talk about. Right. There are people who maybe lost their vehicle mm -hmm. or some heavy damage yes. or just a car wreck. They don't even have the deductible. They oh don't have the deductible. What do they have? They get the insurance payment to get their car fixed. And if they don't have the deductible, they can, can't get their car fixed. And if I see a month or two later, you still haven't gotten your car fixed, then you lose your insurance altogether or mm -hmm. your home. What is that about? Well, because nobody wants to insure a car that's already mm -hmm. beat up. So yeah. it's like, how do I win? And that is the question. Yes. When so, you're looking at uh, many of these homes yeah, I was reading, yes. um, there are over 600 homes in one area of the city. And based upon uh, the information that Red Cross provided, none of these people have insurance. Mm -hmm. These homes are destroyed. Yes. And, z and most of them were lower income homes. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't owe money doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you want to lose that. For most people, that's our biggest investment. Our I home. think so, our home. And I know personally there's a few cases where people who have lost their homes and they have no insurance. Or let's say the mortgage company missed it. They usually follow yes, closely. Yes, they do. But some of them have gotten so large, they don't. So you just sneak through the cracks until mm -hmm. kaboom. Something happens. And there you are. Some rental companies, you can't lease from them without insurance, but we had two or three major buildings here that they didn't have insurance. Zero. Zero. Nobody. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? What are you going to wear to work tomorrow? Are you going to go to work tomorrow? Right. Yes. I wonder if they have a component in the claims experience for emotional counseling. Do they have any kind of a... It's probably under health care. Probably under health care. Yeah. It would be. 
as yeah. a benefit. Yeah. Yep. It would be on if they're working. Mm -hmm. If so there were some storage places that offered like 30 days. Yeah. Um, they'll give you 30 days free um, facility space to put your belongings until you find out where you're going. If they're salvageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because tornadoes typically bring oh lots of damage, rain, a lot of glass, glass, mold. mold. Yes. 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 Ah. Uh, yep. I um. I experienced in my family, we're, we're Kentuckians, and my grandmother's house was destroyed twice Okay. in Falmouth, Kentucky. It, mm -hmm. The tornadoes came through and then the water mm -hmm. from the Licken River. Mm -hmm. So then they were all underwater mm -hmm. in addition to no place to live. She and my cousin survived in a bathtub, mm -hmm. but it quickened me to the reality that this stuff can happen. Now you said something that I thought very interesting given the fact of climate change. Oh, viewers, by the way, you don't have to believe in climate change because <laughs> climate change don't believe in you. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen in yes. front of your face and yes. it's going to show you mm -hmm. what climate change looks like. But it's my understanding that they're now saying that this area of the country is yes. Tornado Valley. Yes, they're saying Ohio has been added. Oh, like we need that. It's in the Tornado Alley now. So Ohio. we may experience it like we just did with Richmond, Indiana. That's yes, close. That's, that's, that's minutes from yeah. Ohio. It literally is you through walk. a rock. Yes. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can walk to Richmond. Yes. Whew, so, so what? So things are shifting. So will the insurance carriers in doing an underwriting review, oh, I have to say You already it. know. I have to say yes. it for the benefit of those who are out here, yes. who are just marginal and playing around. Um, with that type of designation, mm -hmm. in terms of property and mm -hmm. casualty, what does that mean? Our rates are going up. I knew it. You pay insurance based on the type of risk or hazard you mm -hmm. present. So Ohio has been maybe some thunderstorms, some yeah, lightning, yeah. some hail damage, nothing like this. I knew something. Oh yeah, was we still funny. have people paying five, six, seven hundred, nine hundred bucks a year for homeowners insurance, and you can go to parts of Tennessee and they may be paying two thousand for the same yes. thing. And then if you go further south, they may be paying five thousand. Right. Homeowners rates are like over the top, and we're going to go up. Because we are of the go probability of, yes. of this happening yes. ongoing. You can count on it. Thank you for Our that. Our rates will up. increase. Yes. And you can't really negotiate out of that. No. It's where it, we live. That's where we live. It's where we live. So does a person self insure, which is, I'll cover my own risk? Well, if your mortgage company allows that. Uh, no. Most of us can't. No. But Most of us can't even self insure our vehicle. So if you're driving a $30,000 vehicle and it got totaled, if you can't self-insure that, you can't self-insure your home. You're right. Yeah. But I hear this, which is, well, I don't believe in this. I can just fund it myself. And I said, hmm. if you can fund that yourself, mm -hmm. you're in the wrong business. Mm -hmm. And that is cash that has to be readily available. Uh -huh. Not, I got to go to my 401k and get right, it. Right, right. You have to have that money there right. up front. Does, okay, yes. does the state require you to have homeowner's insurance? No. You are required to have car insurance. Correct. Limited. Because you might hurt me. Because you might hurt me. It's always about the other person. And since homeowners is about you, mm -hmm. there's no mandatory. No. If you want to lose everything, have at it. But there are certain landlords that say you're going to at least carry liability because you started that fire because you didn't know what you were cooking, mm -hmm. and now you've caused damage to my building. I lost four tenants because of your fire. I'm going to need that money back. So they may require it. Your mortgage company may require mm -hmm. it. But you don't have to. If you got a home that's paid off, you can just live like that. That And run the risk. I just cannot, and maybe I'm just out of touch because I've been in the industry for so long, and I've got presumptive thinking, which is, of course you have that. No. Why wouldn't you? No. For what you're paying versus what your house is worth, who wants to play it like that? Yeah. But I think so many people are um, 
just trying to get through life. And some people, you know, I, in this job that I do, sometimes I have to deliver a tough message. Oh boy. And you know, I understand some people are struggling and if it's between food on the table and my insurance premium, I'm going with food on the table. That's what they do. Insurance is the first thing that gets cut. And I try my best not to talk down to people. I know agents who may like frown on people like that. Yeah. And you know, they're just, it's a struggle. But I always tell people, make sure you call me before this. Don't let this policy cancel for non-payment. Right. Let's strip it back. Let's raise deductibles. Let's do right. something, something. Mm -hmm. to keep this coverage in place. Because you might be able to get help with a deductible. Yeah, you Raise could. the deductible as high as we can go to lower the premium until you're out of this financial slump. And then come back in order. Yeah, because I know what that feels like. Yeah. And, um, but I want to throw something out here okay, too. Okay, sure. Let's talk about trees. Are we finished with your look? Are we finished? I, had, I want let to me finish see. this show. I want to talk have. about trees because sometimes we buy houses because we love trees. Oh girl, I'm not going I don't no want tree. a tree. I'm not doing no tree. I don't want a tree. I don't do no trees. Um, if your tree damages your neighbor's property and the tree is dead, and should have been cut down, you're liable. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I have two trees. My, my property has nothing other than a magnolia tree, which I keep stunted and cut back. Yes. Oh, yes. no, because that puppy, yes. uh, no, I mean stunted. Yes. He is five feet high, max. I was cutting back no long. Trees. There's trees. So many trees are down. I mean, it's a lumber. I don't know. If you need lumber, I guess this is time. <laughs> but... If a tree falls on your property and it's not your tree, right. it's the neighbor's tree, yes. if that tree is full of leaves, it's yes. your problem. What? And your policy only gives you a limited amount for debris removal. Wait a minute. Yes. If the tree that is your neighbor's property mm -hmm. falls, falls on, on your, your property, it's your problem. It's my problem. Yes. How do I sue my neighbor? You can't. I, I say that's where the Hatfields and McCoys came from. Oh my goodness gracious! You cannot. Yeah. I am my gutter. I'm I'm putting on gutter guards yes. because I cannot. I'm surrounded by oak trees. Yes. I do not understand why people have a love affair with trees. They do. I, they're beautiful and they're close to your home. I, a heavy wind like we saw will I, cut I, right I, through I, there. I, yeah. So a live tree is your responsibility if it falls on your property. If it's a dead tree, meaning there's no leaves, it was just standing there and should have been gone, it is the property owner's responsibility. Ooh. You got to fight that one out. Yeah. Yes. LaRonda, yes. time has run out. Okay. No. Any, give them your phone number, please. Okay. If I have questions, you on here. <laughs> we're answering questions. You don't have to be a client. We're just here to help. 937-222-5884. If Say you're in another state. Yes. I may not know that. Um, law in that state. I'll try to find somebody because I do have some connections. But we're at 937 222 5884. Give us a call. Ask us is this reasonable? Should I be losing it because I haven't heard from anyone yet? We will help you through the process. I am just blessed to have you and your level of commitment yes. on the scene because I have some real issues going on right now with insurance agents and fiduciary responsibility and compassion and yes, all those compassion. things that used to <clears throat> settle who we were mm -hmm. as advisors. Yeah. Uh, I am challenged right now because I'm seeing a lot of stuff, particularly with young people. I'm not disparaging you, you millennials, but you know you're wrong. Uh, it's, it's more than just a quick buck. Yeah. It's about a compassion and a commitment. And you can hear when people are confused because they pause. You can hear when people don't feel great. I know, but I want to thank you <coughs> for coming on, and best of success <coughs> to you and what you're doing, and uh, <coughs> and that's perfectly okay to cough on set. <coughs> We're just a community broadcast that happens to deal with real people. <coughs> I hope she don't croak <coughs> on my show. <laughs> Bye. Anyway, I'm Michelle Graves. <coughs> And thank you for being a part of my interview with LaRonda Jackson on the Dayton travesty and the information she provided us on homeowners insurance 
and uh, I'm looking forward to having her back again. She's been on in the past. You can watch this show on YouTube uh, and, and route it on to your friends. And don't forget to go to her Facebook because she yes. live streams everyday information. Yes. I'm Michelle Graves wishing you an awesome and wonderful day. And um, hopefully you got your act together. Yes. You got the information now. So make the right decisions for you and your family. That's what the power of money is all about. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you soon. Bye-bye.